is using what appears to be mock U.S. naval warships as target practice, raising concerns from U.S. officials about the country's military buildup and increasingly realistic training as tensions with the U.S. increases over Taiwan. Here now is RT's John Huddy. At a glance, it looks like maybe a runway or some kind of strange desert outpost or even farmland. But taking a closer look at these satellite pictures and the story becomes clearer. China has apparently built mock-ups of U.S. naval warships to reportedly be used for ballistic missile target practice in a remote part of the desert in the western Xinjiang region. The Colorado-based satellite imagery company Maxar Technologies took the shots showing not only the shape of a new Ford-class nuclear aircraft carrier, but also what appears to be a model of a Nimitz-class carrier on what looks like railway tracks to enable its movement. There also appears to be at least two Arleigh Burke class naval destroyers, all positioned in a part of the desert used by China's military as a missile range. U.S. officials have raised concerns about China's military buildup, particularly the recent test of its hypersonic missile system that General Mark Milley, chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, called, quote, very concerning. This as tensions between the U.S. and China continue over Taiwan and the South China Sea. China's anti-ship missile programs are carried out by what's called the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force, or PLARF. The Pentagon reported the PLARF conducted a live fire launch of six DF-21 anti-ship ballistic missiles into the disputed waters of the South China Sea back in July 2020. Various military analysts surmise the desert targets may be a sign of China's ongoing efforts to refine its ballistic missile program, with perhaps the U.S. and its allies in the Indo-Pacific region in mind. For the News on RT, John Huddy. Joining me now to have a discussion on this, we have Peter Kuznick. He's a professor of history. All right, all right, Shalom. First and foremost, we love to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rekha Kadash, double honors to the apostles to heart and the rest of the apostles and elders, fervently feeding the flock. Peace and blessings to the elect and the sincere Agwaf that are watching, listening, and learning. Right, I'm here with the brother. Azmawaf, Shalom. Right, back at you with another lesson, uh, which obviously is about World War III. We see the tensions that are rising up with China and america uh over taiwan see what america's trying to do as america always does is um bully another nation for a, another nation which they're trying to take over taiwan which china is not letting that go and you see how you got that uh you got the uh, u.s military leader i believe i believe uh he is He's shaking in his boots. They're concerned about what's happening with China and their military weapons. And that's all according to prophecy. So let me get real fast. This is Job, the 18th chapter. Was this whole chapter? This whole chapter is beautiful. But Job 18, I'm gonna start with 12. It says his strength shall be hunger bitten. And Destruction shall be ready at his side. And that's what we see. Destruction ready at America's sides with these missiles. It shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. Here's the point. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle. And that shall bring him to the and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. So we see that the confidence and um America's army is, is being is being brought low. Because usually America will have a proud, a prideful ass spirit on them. Oh, yeah, man, we got the best military. We're not uh, worried about that. But we can clearly see from listening to the video and just looking at the countenance of the leader of the of, of the uh, American army that he's clearly scared because China is really with the shits. China, Russia, Iran. And this is all going to lead to America's destruction. You got something, bro? God. It's the uh, book of Jeremiah, chapter 50. You know, T. Oh, God. From the top? Uh, now, nah, verse 41. Starting at 41. Okay. And it says, look, 
a great army is coming from the north, a great nation, and many kings are rising against you from far off lands. Mm. They are armed with bows and spears. They are cruel and show no mercy. Mm. As they ride forth on horses, they sound like a roaring sea. They are coming in battle formation, plan to destroy you, Babylon. <laughs> the king of Babylon has heard reports about the enemy, and he is weak with fright. <laughs> Yo, and that was the guy, man. <laughs> hold on, hold on real fast. Because I'm going to go back to replay it. Because, man, they said that in a roundabout way that he's bitching. Oh, let me go back to it. Oh, man, that's too funny. Yeah, this dude. It's hypersonic missile system that just military buildup, particularly the recent test used by China's military of a Nimitz-class carrier on what looks like railway tracks to enable its movement. There also appears to be at least two Arleigh Burke-class naval destroyers, all positioned in a part of the desert used by China's military as a missile range. U.S. officials have raised concerns about China's military buildup. See that? They're raising uh, concerns. They're afraid. Particularly the recent test of its hypersonic missile system that General Mark Milley, chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, called, quote, very concerning. <laughs> See, very concerning. <laughs> yep. All right. And that's one of the head guys. Yep. So we see that, you know, um, their confidence is being brought low and they're being made weak. Hey, 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 could you read that again? Okay. Yep. <laughs> it's uh, Jeremiah 50 and verse uh, 43. The king of Babylon has heard reports about the enemy. Yeah, man, about how they're testing their hypersonic missiles, different things like that. And he is weak with fright. Mm, he's Ooh. weak with fright. Pangs of anguish have gripped him like those of a woman in labor. Mm. <laughs> God, exactly, man. Like the brother was uh, expounding upon, you know, this place, they know that they're, they're demise. They, mm -hmm. it's, it's only so, so far you can go with bullying these different nations. And now these, you know, the Lord has put the spirit of war. Can you grab a uh, Joel three and fourteen? Uh, now the Lord has put the spirit of war upon these Gentiles, man, to where they have beaten their um swords and swords and uh, uh, plowshares and swords. And swords. Yep. you know. Uh, let's see, what was it Th three and uh? Yeah, verse. Uh, sorry, verse nine. Yeah, verse nine. God. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles: Prepare a war, wake up the mighty men, and the mighty men are awakened. You know, in all these nations, while. You know, these American troops are getting more and more feeble, you know, uh, earlier this year uh, with the uh, with the recruiting that from the United States Army. You know, they had that uh, that commercial with uh, basically they were displaying how they allow transgenders and, and all that the alphabet community in the army. While China and Russia, they're over there priding themselves and having masculine men, mm -hmm. you know, so these people are not afraid of America anymore. Mm -hmm. They see America for exactly what it is. It's a frightened woman, mm -hmm. you know, that's ready to be taken. Mm -hmm. Especially with this guy, uh, Sleazy Joe in office, man, man, that's, man, that's a lot as a uh, Shaq of uh, like Shaq from the NBA would say that's barbecue chicken time, bro. <laughs> they ready to eat that guy up. So that guy bought him, man. He, he's, he, he's a nut, bro. Yeah. Right. And, and at that, he's a Democrat, too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, it says, prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Mm. So a lot of these nations that were once weak, now they have strengthened themselves in the military might and capability. Mm -hmm. and, you know, America is no longer, although America still, you know, <laughs> In, in hindsight, it's still you know a powerful country, you know. But now these other nations, they got nukes now, man. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, okay, you gonna push a button, we're gonna push a button. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and um, <laughs> and um, better too, right? Right, way better uh nuclear capability, right? Like Russia, for example, China, and then you have uh Russia backing up Iran, um, East and and um East India. They're a prime example of let the weak say i am strong because they were once or they didn't have any missiles at first and i ran too but now they're strong because they got that great equalizer like the brother was saying which is what those uh nuclear missiles you want to keep going or oh, that's God, no, that's, that's, okay that's, gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you got some else God. God. yeah yeah this uh revelation 11 and 14. oh let's start verse 11. It says, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the heavenly father entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them 
which saw them, which is dealing with the prophets, all right? Their prophets are waking up to the truth. <clears throat> Verse 11, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in the cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And this is talking about when the nuclear fire starts dropping on America, and the elect get beamed up on a chariot. The direct precept of that is Revelation 18. You know, a lot of jakes break that down and say, yeah, man, come out of the philosophies of America. Now, that's some of the elect getting beamed up on the chariot. Verse 13, and the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. You want to break that down? God, yeah, because America's broken up in 10 different um, zones, you mm -hmm. know, these different zip codes, mm -hmm. and I was, it's in 10 categories. So, you know, pretty much this code just saying all of America is going to fall. Mm -hmm. so, it yeah. says, and then the earthquake was slain of men, 7,000. And the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the power of heaven. 7,000 is a complete number. Mm -hmm. so it's going to be a, <laughs> the Lord's going to complete that work, man, on, on these Babylonians. Mm -hmm. That's right. Verse 14 The second woe was passed. And, and behold, woe, oh, the like word it. woe just simply means destruction. Yeah. You know, a bad time. So the destruction or the second destruction, which was the second world war or mm -hmm. World War II, is already passed. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to this, this last woe. Mm hmm. Says then, behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The third woe cometh quickly, and this is pretty much one of the apexes and climaxes of Bible prophecy, man. That's you right. know, this is the place. This is this woe is what's going to uproot evil, you know, mm. for forever. Mm -hmm. After this woe, listen, we're going to have a throne established of righteousness that's going to continue forever. So we're looking forward to this, man. This is what all the prophets Jeremiah twenty eight eight says. You know, for all the prophets that have been before me, I prophesied of evil. You know, war and pestilence. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I'll praise y'all about Shemal Shah that he's given us his hope in war. You know, because right. we know that at ultimately the war is not ours. You know, he says that the war is, is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. All we gotta do is just stand still, man, and mm -hmm. see the salvation of our power. Mm -hmm. So we're living in beautiful but yet dangerous times. Yeah, that's right, man. That's right. Why? Because this has to come, man. Uh -huh. This has to come for our kingdom to be established. Let me get that. Second edges. <clears throat> hey, because you got a lot of people, they're actually afraid. A lot of people don't want this. Uh, a lot of people don't want this um, to happen, man. A lot of guys that know that the Israelites. But how do you expect to rule the uh to, to rule uh to rule the world, man? You got you you got guys that say Quam Yasharala will do you even know what that what that mean? Quam Yasharala means rise, Israel. Okay, so we want Israel to rise. See, they, them guys talk the talk, man, but we 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 walk the walk, man. You saying Kwame Asarala, but then you don't want the destruction to happen. You, you got to want that to happen so that we can rule. You want to start back living your life and stop waiting on the Lord. Yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> this is Second Exodus 4 and 29. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, which was sown, America that was sown in earth in the uh, 1700s. And if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that is sown with good. And what's that? Our kingdom. So it's saying if this place that was that was established, don't be turned upside down. It doesn't it doesn't pass. It doesn't pass away. And then our kingdom can come because you can not have the Edomite Empire and Jake ruling at the same time, man. Okay, tells you in Surah 33 and 14 that a, a good is set against evil. So you can't have the good and the evil ruling at the same time. That's why evil is evil is prevailing. Evil is the is the prevailing spirit right now in this world. But good and righteousness is going to be the prevailing spirit in the kingdom of heaven. So that's why this place got to go. Got something, bro? Uh, Ezekiel uh, 2 and 10. Come on, brother. And this is what then this is what we should be doing, man. Occupying ourselves in prophecy. As a matter of fact, we can start at verse nine. Come on, verse nine. Yeah. And he says, and when I look, behold, a yeah, hand you might, with you might start at verse eight. Come on, all right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, verse eight. And he says, But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. And the Lord is returning. He's correcting us, man. He's basically turned our minds into uh, obedience now, right? So we don't get caught up in this destruction. 
He says, open thy mouth and eat what I give thee. You got to eat the whole roll, mm -hmm. right? And within this whole roll, I'm about to tell you what's in it. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, which is the scriptures, the scroll. He says, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. I mean, it was covered in it. And there was written therein lamentations, mourning, and woe. So there is no prosperity message, you know, for, 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 for Babylon, man. You know, in the form of these prophecies, you got lamentations, mourning, and woe. Lamentation means you're weeping, you're crying. You know, mourning is, you know, obviously you're mourning. And woe is destruction, wars, you know, because we can't. We can't forget if you get uh, Exodus 15 and 3 real quick. Because this is the uh, one of the characteristics of our power, man. It says, Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name, right? So with him being a man of war, what, what do you think is going to happen? War. He's going to, mm -hmm. he's the instigator of all these wars mm -hmm. on the right and left hand side, man. Mm -hmm. But good will prevail, right? And just so happened <laughs> by predestination, you know, Lord willing. You know, we're part of that, that, that side that's on the good, that's going to win. That's right. We pull this Isaiah 13 and verse 4, because the brother said that the Heavenly Father instigates um, on this war. It says, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Yahweh of hosts mustereth. The host of the battle, let you know what, which we ain't going to the word for mustereth, it means oversee. Okay, the heavenly father is the one that's overseeing um this battle. He's the one that's controlling who does what. Why? Get this it's Proverbs 21. Verse 1. It says, The king's heart or mind is in the hand of Yahweh. As the rivers of water, he turneth it with us wherever he will. So these kings does exactly what the Heavenly Father programs them to do, okay? So when you see a China, China build to mock U.S. warship for target practice, that's because the Heavenly Father put, put it in their minds to do so. See? Mm -hmm. Got something, bro? Uh, Isaiah 63, verse 4. Right. Go ahead, brother. Right, and it says, and this, uh, this is... Yahweh Shai says, for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed has come. All right. So the Lord is looking forward <laughs> to this day of vengeance, man. It's in his mind. You know, and this is a cut on you Christians who just thinks that God is all love and he just forgives and forgets, you know, what America has done. No, the Lord, you know, <laughs> you know, he, his time is not like our time. And man, you know, a thousand years is like unto the day, you know, so what happened in the transatlantic slave trade and you know, all the things that happened to the tribes. This is still fresh in his, in his mind. So this year of vengeance that he's had set up is coming soon, man. All right? And it's going to, it's going to happen in the, in the form of World War Three. That's right. There's Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. That which has been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And the Heavenly Father requireth that which is past. All right. So the Lord, <laughs> he demands of Babylon an answer, you know, for what it has done. No matter how how long ago it was, man. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it was a year ago or a thousand years ago, mm -hmm. no one's gonna be on skate. When you can you get uh Cyrax 16. Cyrax 16, and uh I wanna say verse uh, eleven. Uh Cyrax 16 and verse eleven. And if there be one stiff neck among the people, yeah, Esau is the is the <laughs> the apex predator of being a stiff neck individual. All right. Go ahead. It says, it is marvel if he escape unpunished. Yeah, so you're going to marvel if he escapes unpunished, man. Because the Lord holds no one, you know, uh, blameless if they just been doing a whole bunch of, you know, wicked acts. Right? Yep, that's what Job 4 and uh, 8 say. It says, for mercy and wrath are with him. See that? For mercy and wrath are with him. And when he comes back, those two things will be poured out. Mercy upon the elect and wrath upon and indignation upon everyone else. It says he is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure. And see, and that's the that's the beautiful uh, uh yin and yang, if you will, you know, the, mm -hmm. the light and darkness of our power. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna jump down to verse 13. Okay. It says the sinner shall not escape with his spoils. <sighs> and, <laughs> and that's Esau, man. Yep. Because he really he really expects to and who's the spoils? We are. 
it says uh, First Maccabees chapter two that all nations have spoiled us, but Esau he's got us in his hands right now, mm -hmm. and he's not about to escape with us. He really wants to, you know, you know, make us his perpetual slaves, man. Mm -hmm. You know, but mm -hmm. in the law in Exodus chapter uh, what was that twenty two says if uh, he that still for yeah, man, he that still for man, if he be found in his hand, Amen, you know, friend, he's going to have to get put to death. Let's get that Exodus twenty one and verse sixteen. Says that he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Yeah, he's surely gonna be put to death, man. America is surely gonna be rooted up out of this power seat. Why? Because the spoils are still in his hands. Mm -hmm. And like Cyrex says, you know, surely the sinner would not escape with the spoils. Mm -hmm. So the Lord will redeem his elect. Mm -hmm. You know? Time. This is Revelation 9 and 15. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month. In a year for the slated third part of men, and the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand. And I heard the number of them that's right, an innumerable amount of missiles is coming to slay the third part of men. All right, because you got three classifications of men, right? Right, you have the sons, you have the sons of the Mosai, you got the sons of the wicked, and you also have uh on the son on the sons of men, okay, which all you nations are going to be devoured with the missiles, right. predominantly Esau. Right. Hey, the Lord has his determination to, to destroy you, Edomites. Uh, you got something? Okay. Kind of, kind of get, get that, and then we'll read Isaiah the 34th chapter. All right, yeah, this uh, second Ezra chapter 16. Oh, I got you, bro. Right, go there. We're starting at verse like 12. Oh, uh, yeah. He shall not miss. Okay, here you go. Yeah, verse 12, he says, The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. And what's going to cause the earth to quake? The missiles. Mm -hmm. And it says, And the sea arises up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled. And you got to visualize this, man. When those missiles hit, you know, <laughs> it's going to be breaking up. You know, the oceans, the water's going to be getting shot up, you know? And it says, And the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also, before. Uh, out of wine and before the glory of his power for strong is his right hand and <laughs> who's his right hand yahweh shot because john chapter 5 says uh yahweh shot says that the father judges no man but i judge you know so strong is his right hand that been at the boat see so yahweh shot is gonna be you know been in these bows putting up on these king's minds to shoot these missiles mm -hmm. says his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss See mm. that? And they shall not miss. And the Lord is training these, uh, uh, is training China not to miss, man. Mm -hmm. You know? And it says, when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world, and this is how you know it's not actual arrows, man, bows and arrows, because bows and arrows cannot travel from one end of the earth to another. Obviously, there has to be a similitude to this bow and arrow that we read. We got guys that say that's some more literal arrows. <laughs> when have you ever seen an actual bow and arrow shoot from New York to California? <laughs> You know, hey, Khan, because uh, the prophets, okay, they didn't, they didn't, there was no word, there was no such thing as a missile back then. Yeah. So when they received these visions, they had to call it, they call it like how they uh, saw it, that they, they had to call it in, in the terms that they had then. Like you read about the uh, read in Revelation 8 and 9 about the locusts mm -hmm. and, and different things like that. What that's what that's talking about the planes. Okay, that they were using in those in those particular wars. Okay, so you gotta know, you gotta have that discernment. See? Yep. Yeah, there's more on that. Oh uh, no, that was it on that. Okay, John. Uh this is Isaiah chapter 34. Man, this whole chapter, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm this, whole, <laughs> this whole chapter is good, man. I'm gonna just skip to the point because I know Jake. All right, Isaiah 34, it's on our verse. Here he says, their slain also shall be cast out, and their stinks shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melt, melted with their blood. All the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. What is that called? Mushroom cloud. Okay? That's the heavens being rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a fallen fig, fig from the fig tree, which... When you go to the word host, host just means army. All the armies of Esau are gonna fall. And not only be and not only because of Russia and China 
and their allies, but also because of uh, of the of the beasts and the ten horns, which the beast is NATO, and the ten horns is talking about the EU. They're also going to turn around and shoot missiles on, missiles on America, like Turkey, for instance. Turkey is going to be like, like, yeah, I've been waiting on this shit because Turkey hates America, man. It says, for my swore shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, which Idumia is the Greek way to say Edom. So it shall come down upon Edom and upon the people of my curse to judgment, letting you know that they're the uh, uh, curse. They're the cursed people. It says, the sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh have a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. The Lord is likening these Edomites to sacrificial animals. Whereas that's going to be a sweet sacrifice to the Heavenly Father. Like it. Mm -hmm. you can, uh, skip the James 5 and 5 in the NLT. Because uh, there's a reason why. You know, America is, is the leading country in obesity. You know, the Lord did that by design. <laughs> you know, because this is going, he, he wants a fatted sacrifice. It's uh, James 5 and 5. It says, you have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourselves for the day of slaughter. See? <laughs> so that's why the Lord, you know, it's going. he's got all these obese people in America. Just so he can have a good sacrifice, man. Fatted sacrifice. Uh, back to Isaiah 34 and 5 and NOT says, And when my sword has finished its work in the heavens, it will fall upon Edom, the nation I have marked for destruction. Yeah. See that? <laughs> hey man, you you are you you are you are marked for destruction. And why verse 8 is gonna tell you for for it is the day of Yahweh's revenge, mm. the year when Edom will be paid back for all it did to Israel. Yeah. See that man? Yeah. So that's why the Lord is determined to do this. Why? Because all the all the things that Edom did to Israel. Because you got to remember, man, Esau got to pay for what he did uh, to us when the Babylonians, which the Babylonians were Assyrians by nationality, when they when they had came up when 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 they had came up against us and burned down our cities, pursuing the first Ezra's the fourth chapter, and um, occupied our lands, man. During the Greeks, okay, during the Romans, right, and now 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 as the uh, dragon all right that's 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 been loose for that great season yeah. esau esau has esau has depth going back to thousands of years ago man hey. Th uh, yeah bro that's oh, why it says mark yeah shoot Th oh, man thousands of, <laughs> thousands of years man imagine that yeah sir uh you know, your depth goes back to uh year 400 bc mm -hmm. like damn mm -hmm. yeah man esau you got a lot of stuff to pay for man and that's why they have the Heavenly Father's been building up your iniquities, man, so that he can just throw the whole book at you, <laughs> sentence you for a thousand years, and then extermination. Yep, and it all starts with this, man. Our nuclear fire burning America. You right. got something, bro? Kanye, Jeremiah 50. You believe in NLT. Let's try that verse uh, 24. Kanye. Because oh, America set itself up for destruction. What does it say in Psalms 141? It says that the uh, wicked shall be caught in his own snare, his own trap. All right? It says, listen, Babylon, for I have set a trap for you. <laughs> you are caught, for you have fought against Yahweh. And what was that trap? If you can grab uh, Proverbs 20 and 25 real quick. King James. Okay. It says, it is a snare, and the snare is a trap, to the man who devoureth that which is holy. And what has Esau devoured? The children of Israel, man. All right? So that's the snare. That's the trap that the Lord set for this place. The very fact that you got Israelites in the hand of Esau over here in America goes to show you that, hey, America's in the trap. Mm -hmm. It says, and after vows to make inquiry. So yeah, you go back. I got something real quick. Okay. Okay. Just, just, just going to uh, elect back. Hey, that's a new saying. Elect back. Uh, elect back of what? Out the trap. Uh, yep. Surah twenty-seven, verse twenty-five. Whoso casteth the stone on high, casteth it on its own head, and a and a deceitful stroke shall make wounds. Whoso diggeth the pit shall fall therein. 
and he that setteth a trap shall be taken therein. He that worketh mischief it shall fall upon him, and he shall not know whence it cometh. Because mm -hmm. really, this reminds me of uh, ancient Egypt, like how the Egyptians were like, hey, y'all leave, get away, you know, because y'all, 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 the people that's bringing all these calamities here, your power, he's upset, man. So y'all leave away from us, so we can have peace. Well, America, hey, listen, man, and <laughs> that's why the trap that we over here, because we got a power that's that's fighting for it, man. He's angry on the behalf of his uh on his Alexei. Mm -hmm. He's coming to avenge, you know, avenge our blood. So, and by default, America's gonna have to go through a lot of these atrocities. That's You're gonna right. wish that you would have never taken the Lord's chosen people in your possession, man. That's right, man. All the mischief that you did is gonna return upon your own head, man. Why are you thinking that you know we're just gonna be scumming the earth? For the rest, for the, for the remainder of eternity, hell no, nah, man. All right. Um. Well, uh, some some damn devil said it. Hey, it's a brother calling me. So some damn some damn devil said it. Uh, who was it? Was it Kennedy or, or was it his brother? He was like, he basically said, "What if uh, God's people are, are black?" And oh yeah, been, yeah. I we, remember that, we've yeah. been uh persecuting them the whole time. Yeah, you damn right. You right back, bro. Oh. Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm laying back on what the brother is saying. Let's go back to Jeremiah 50 and 25. And it says, uh, let me scroll down real quick. It says, Yahweh have opened his armory and brought out his and brought out weapons to vent his fury. See that? <laughs> and he says, the terror that falls upon the Babylonians will be the work of uh, the sovereign uh, Yahweh of heavens of armies, man. So this is the work of the Lord that we're witnessing, man. You know, Christians always talk about, you know, uh, uh, they, they doing the work of the Lord. They want to see the work of the Lord. Well, this is the work of the Lord. America being uh, destroyed. You know, Revelation chapter 17. Let me grab that real quick. I'm going to read out of the Bible. Because this is really the Lord's will. Right? What is that? In Ephesians 5 and 17, 5, uh, 15 says, uh, be not ignorant. Of uh no, be not unwise to know what the Lord's will is. Well, let's see what the Lord's will is. Revelation 17 and verse uh 17, and, and this is speaking about this whole chapter is speaking about uh the harlot, which is America. It says, For Yahweh have put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of Yahweh shall be fulfilled. As a matter of fact, like it. Let me start at verse 16. It says and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, speaking about the EU. And he says, and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. See that? And it says, for Yahweh have put in their hearts to fulfill his will. So this is the Lord's will for this place to be burnt with fire, man. In particular, Isaac being missiles and also the chariot uh, fire. Right, because those chairs are going to be bringing a uh, uh, fiery destruction as well. And it says, and to agree and give her their kingdom unto the beast until the words of Yahweh shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Right, and America's <laughs> is rule and reign of terror is about to be brought to its end, man. All right, so let's go back to Jeremiah 50 and verse uh, 25, no, verse 26. He says, yes, come against her from distant lands, break open her granaries, crush her walls and houses into heaps of rubble. And when you read Joel, the second chapter, it speaks about how those missiles is going to uh, break through, you know, uh, America's defense systems, crush through her walls, man. All right. It says crush her walls and houses into heaps of rubble, destroy her completely and leave nothing. And this is one way how, you know, this isn't speaking about. Uh, ancient Babylon, right, which is today's uh, modern day Iraq, because you actually still have, you know, people living there, you know, still have people pitching tent there, you know, it wasn't destroyed completely, right, but this, um, this Babylon, right, will be con destroyed completely, when you read in Jeremiah 50, it speaks about how it's going to be a, a desolate, a desolate and a howling wasteland, right, it says, uh, verse 27 destroy even her young bulls it will be terrible for them too. slaughter them all who for babylon's day of reckoning has come see that for for babylon's day of reckoning has come man right so it says 
Verse 28, listen to the people who have escaped from Babylon as they tell in Jerusalem how Yahweh our power has taken vengeance against those who destroy his temple. All right, and Esau really has, he has, <laughs> he has a fetish for the Lord's temple, man. You know, he's, he's really, it's just something about him that just intrigues that temple. You know, when you consider what the Greeks did, when they, uh, you know, when they took uh, took us into their hands during the time in the time of the Greeks, what they do? They went straight to the temple and polluted it, sacrificed swine's flesh, you know, in in uh, year uh, 80, 70 A.D. You know, with the uh, siege of Jerusalem with Titus Vespasian, what they do? They went once again, ransacked the temple, right? Had orgies in it, you know, different types of abominations. You know, so this man really has, you know, an intrigue with this temple and polluting it. And now, once again, you know, like Elder Yashawama makes a beautiful point all the time, you know, how now we're the temple, man. And once again, this man is trying to destroy this temple by putting you, by putting that, that, that dragon juice inside of you, you know, and eventually polluting uh, Israel with that, with the uh, microchip, which is the mark of the beast, the MOTB. All right. <laughs> but the Lord's got enough of it, man. This man has he's 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 basically uh, heightened, you know, his sins, you know, like Revelation chapter 18 says that his sins ascends up to the uh, to the heavens, man. You know, so now the Lord got to knock him down. So let me, uh, let me go here to say it's the brother's computer. I'm not used to. Uh, let's see. Let me go here to second Maccabees. Chapter six. Bear with me one second. This is 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and verse uh, 12. All right. Start at verse 12. He says, now I beseech. And this is also laying back at the point that the brother had made earlier to where how the Lord has just basically allowed Esau to stack sin on top of sin on top of sin. So he can just throw the whole thing at him. It says, now I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities, right? The Israelites, but they that judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for a chastening of our nation, right? Because the Lord has been chastening the nation of Israel, man. All right? When you read, uh, what was that First Peter four and uh, Ezekiel nine? He says, start uh, with the with uh, with my people first. Start within my sanctuary first. So we've been. We've been getting chastened, you know, before these heathen nations have, man, right? This is why Esau is living in luxury. When you read 2nd Ezra chapter 3, it says that uh, I have went here and there through the heathen. And I've seen that they uh, dwell and uh, they flow in wealth, right? Verse 13, for it is, it is a token of great goodness when wicked doers are not suffered for any long time, but for with punish. Verse 14, for not as with other nations whom the Lord patiently forbear to punish so the lord has been patiently forbearing america to be punished all right he says till they come to the fullness of their sins so dealeth he with us see that so the lord has allowed this place to come uh to the fullness of his sins to ripe to ripen itself in his sins man so the lord is more than justified you know to do whatever <laughs> pleases him you know to take this place out and we got to thank the lord that he doesn't judge us the same way this is why Jake, as soon as we go off, it just seems like the next day or the next hour, you know, your woman tripping, you know, your car getting repo, you're getting a wreck. Mm -hmm. And you know why this happened to you, because you know that, you know, what you just did, offended your power. Mm -hmm. But this is why, uh, what is that in uh, Proverbs 3 says, happy is the man whom the Lord chasing it. This is mm -hmm. why we should be happy when he chastens us now. Mm -hmm. All right, because he's not judging us like Esau. <laughs> yeah, for real, man. He's ready to throw the whole book at Esau. All right, Esau, Esau's judgment is fat. All right, that's why all these nations is just coming up against them. All right, Esau's gonna be left alone. Like he gonna be looking side to side. I'm gonna get that over die. He's gonna be looking side to side, <laughs> looking for some help. No, nigga, through over that. Look at this shit, man, bro. All the time, bro. See, see, it bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my let me just pull up my phone. Bro. 
I guess, brother. Bro, bro, bro this shit happen all the time, bro. You know? Devils be mad. Straight up. There we go. But wow, every time I'm trying to get over diet, though, <laughs> right? They scared that over diet. They scared that over diet, bro. I'm surprised they didn't take that out. <laughs> yeah, I heard you brought out um, Revelation 17 okay. about the ten horns. Uh, that's upon the beast, which is uh, the EU and NATO. These I hate the whore. Uh, this is direct precept to that over diet for seven. All the men of thy confederacy have have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee. Have deceived the yeah, man, the NATO and the EU, all right, America's allies, even China, because China allegedly was a so called ally of America, too. Mm-hmm. Now they're not no more. It's just and prevailed against against thee. And China also eat the bread, uh, oh, slogan, jump the gun. It says, They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee, yeah, those that are living good with America, because China's living good, too, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of uh, um, uh, products. That are sold over here in America, what Chinese products? Okay, uh, China imports a lot into uh, into America. It says there is no understanding in him. Mm. Esau's finished. Oh. And and the NLT makes it even clearer. It says all your allies will turn against you, <laughs> and America don't even know it, man. And it says they will help to chase you from your land. They will promise you peace. While plotting to deceive and destroy you, and, and what's been going on here lately? You know, uh, the president been going to the EU nations and you know chopping up these these peace trees and these peace deals, and you know trying to make everything more stable, right? But the whole time, in their king's minds, no, they're thinking of ways to deceive this place, man. The whole time, bro. Yep, yep. And it says uh, they will promise you peace while plotting to deceive and destroy you. Your trusted friends, see that your trusted friends. The ones that you have a so-called history with will set traps for you and you won't even know about it. Woo. <laughs> so, yeah, America, you, you got a lot of traps. Everybody hates you, man. You know, you know that uh, TV show, Everybody Hates Chris. No, everybody mm. hates uh, America. America, man. Yeah, kind of. The nation that's drunken off your off your wine, now they woken up, got sobered up, and now they mad at you, man. You know? That's right. Well, with that, man, we're going to close. Give all praise on the glory until Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakakadash, death to America. Death to America.